What problems do you see in the following artificial life simulation? Many, I'm sure, but the community saw two in particular. First, there are many different plant organisms in front of you, where it is almost impossible to visually tell one from the other. And second, well, what happened to the soil? Today, we will solve both problems. Hello everyone! For those of you new here, this is Biomaker CA. It is an artificial life research project, where we simulate biomes composed of plants. Each plant is an organism composed of several independent agent cells that share a DNA with one another. Their goal is to survive, reproduce and adapt to different environments and competition. In previous videos, we explained how it works and showed some interesting experiments. Today, we will add unique colors to our plants and stabilize the soil in our environments, since they were some of the most requested features and easiest to do. Let's start with colors. Look at that! I find it so much more pleasant to watch. Now each plant has a unique hue tint. This means that we mix the original plant colors with an organism-specific color. I say hue because we only change the wavelength of the color and keep the same saturation and lightness. I like this mix, but we can highlight the hue as much as we want. For instance, here is what would happen if we mix the hue to be equal parts with the original colors. It's wild, and perhaps it might be useful for some visualizations. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with it. A few observations. First, the hues are unique, so that there is no alive plant that has the same color of the other. But most people will not be able to discern from very similar hues, so it is not a perfect solution. Second, some people suggested to have plants decide their own colors, instead of it being a way that we visualize it. We might explore that direction in the future, but I think it wouldn't have solved the issue of distinguishing nearby plants, because plants of the same species would most likely have the same colors. But that's not all. Some of you may have already noticed that organisms get darker over time. That's because finally you can see how old plants are by seeing how they get darker during their lifetime. Hopefully this is useful by itself, but it also helps with differentiating nearby plants further. Okay, that was easy. Now let's fix soil unbalance. In previous videos we've seen some examples where soil would disappear or take over the entire environment. We even worked hard to create some plants that do not destroy the environment. And, to be fair, there are reasons to care about studying artificial life whose outbreaks do or do not cause catastrophes to an environment. But, if what we mostly care about is creating increasingly complex plants, it might make sense to design environments that are resistant to bad mutations of plants. So, as an initial proposal, here is my solution to the soil imbalance. Do you see the difference? I bet that you don't. But actually, now the soil is self-stabilizing. The rule is quite simple. If the soil is too low, in this case less than one third of the height of the environment, there is a chance that earth cells get generated at the boundary. This does not happen if there are any plants at the boundary, however, so alive plants can technically keep the soil at lower levels as long as they can survive there. Likewise, if there is too much soil, in this case more than two-thirds of the height of the environment, earth cells can get randomly converted to air. With this new law of physics, even tiny environments can host life for longer. Our initial DNA, for instance, had no chance here in the past, but now it lasts much longer, until a bad mutation occurs. Note that, finally, life ends not because of the environment degenerating, but because plants didn't manage to reproduce at a certain point. This will become a common pattern. Even our below tiny DNA benefits from it. If you recall, in previous videos we needed to have a lower mutation rate for it to survive here. But now we can go with a standard mutation rate and, well, it still eventually dies, but not because of the soil. As a reminder, every time a plant reproduces by using the pink flowers, a new seed is placed in the environment with a mutated DNA, forming a new organism. Here, we observe that eventually these mutations cause some plants to stop reproducing, and in small environments this becomes deadly for the biome. We know that tiny environments are undesirable due to their width, so let's move to wider ones. And what is better than eruption, our lovely environment where lava constantly falls from the sky? 
Let's see how our DNAs behave here, now that the soil is not an issue anymore. First, our initial DNA seems to perform much better, but I had to initialize it with a low mutation rate. Mutations are still adaptive, meaning that the mutation rates are mutable themselves, but if they started with high values, life would cease immediately. And even with that, eventually, they all die. This is bad, and as we will see, it seems to happen quite often. Now let's run TinyDNA on eruption. Let's start with a 36 height environment, just to show what before was particularly hard, and now seems to be fine. Like last time, plants quickly inhabit almost everywhere, except for the far right, where I'm increasingly suspecting that life may be truly impossible. Since the soil is self-balancing now, plants can constantly try to adapt in the conquered environment of the right, while the left part seems to be pretty much salt. We can see some variations of plants being born here and there, and I truly don't know what would have happened if I ran this for longer, because I thought that moving to the height of 72 environment would have been more interesting. And I think I was right, but let me know what you think in the comments. You are seeing a run of eruption for 350,000 steps, something unprecedented so far. The reason why I stopped there is because the biome dies. But how does it happen? At first, nothing exciting happens. Plants all have similar DNAs with just some odd ones out trying different stuff. The left is totally covered, while the right is still unsolved. This continues for a while, so let me use this time for some announcements. First, I want to remind you that this is an open source project, and everything that you see is reproducible online with Google Collabs, links in the description. I welcome collaboration and would love to see different people making their own versions or extensions of Biomaker CA. So, to make this easier, I have finally set up a Discord server, and I invite you to join if you are interested in anything that is artificial life related, or you would like to contribute to this project in any form. Link in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and consider sharing this video with people who might be interested. Now, back to the simulation. At around 150,000 steps, finally mutations are visibly accumulating. We can clearly see this staircase-like plant growing. This actually happens often, so I suspect it is an easy mutation to discover, starting from tiny DNA. But this specific mutation is short-lived. At 200,000 steps, especially on the right, we can see some early experiments of plants composed of mostly roots. They also start to become bigger plants overall, which, as we will see, is the seed of the future extinction event. Quickly, this root variation moves to the left environment, changing it completely. They seem to be dominating that environment, and shortly after, most of the eruption environment is covered with variants of root-based wild plants. Note that at the center we can still see some of the original tiny DNA traits, but they are struggling to survive. Everything looks healthy for a while, with interesting diversity going on everywhere. Until an unfortunate series of mutations creates all-encompassing plants in too many places all at once, that starve out everything else and don't reproduce. The result? The extinction of the biome. My take on this is simply that this environment was too small and too interconnected. But what do you think? What should we try next? Let me know in the comments or on Discord. Thanks for watching and until next time.